Welcome back to our C Sharp um, beginner tutorial. Um, I think it's almost time we stop calling it um, a beginner tutorial. We've, at least we've covered more than 80% of um, what I've wanted to cover for the beginner course. So there's just a few things. Um, most of the remaining things are probably just just to make you a bit more comfortable with um, with C sharp okay um, today what we're going to look at is a uh, composition of classes okay so uh, let me just bring up a part like that uh, composition of classes okay so um, what does this composition of classes mean okay so uh, what it means is um, I imagine you have class called a okay um you have a class called a now you want um uh you want this this class called a has some components okay in it it has some components in it that are actually um kind of uh, interrelated in such a way that and you could also reuse those components to do other things okay like okay let me um okay maybe i'm being too abstract but let me just finish um the abstract definition and then i'll give you a practical um example so um yeah we we, we have some components let's say you have a b a c a d okay now this b is like think of it as a component and it's um it's part of what makes a c is another component and it's part of what makes a d is another component and it's uh, also part of what makes up a but if you look at b critically b c and d individually they are actually um large enough or let's say they are actually um independent enough to be to be to be regarded as a class on their own okay so you realize that apart from using b c d to to form a you could also combine b and c to form some other class maybe maybe q or r okay you could also use b separately to do some other kind of work okay so you see in that case you don't need to um it, you don't need to have to create a in order to have access to your b okay so what you should do in in, in such cases what you need to do is you need a composition of classes. So what you need to do is you should create a class B, create another class uh, C, and create another class D, okay? So you first of all create these three classes. And then what you do, when you create A, you take objects of these classes okay so you're going to create objects of these classes or you make it as um as a field you make these classes as fields of class a okay so in that sense you are kind of composing b c and d into uh a to form one giant class called a okay i'm, I'm going to give you like i said i'm going to give you a, a practical example so before we head into note um into Visual Studio. A good example is, um, imagine you're making a game that, that has to do with a car, okay? Uh, maybe it's a, it's a racing game, okay? So uh, you need a car class, okay? So for example, you need, you need a car class, okay? Now, because of the kind of racing game you want, you're, you're trying to make, you want to make um, en engines to be kind of, um, to, to, to be def deferable, you want to have variety, different varieties of engines, okay? So you need you need an engine, okay? Um, you need, uh, okay, let me not write it in, in small, let's write it with capital A. You need an engine, okay? You also want different variety of uh, tires, okay? So um, if, if you look at uh, racing, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are different, um, based on the little Gran Turismo I've played, um, there are different um, types of tires and they all perform different functions. So there are tires 
you could use for maybe racing in snow. There are tires that are good for racing when it's raining. There are tires for endurance race. Okay, so uh, you need tires. Okay, um, I'll just make it tire. Okay, um, you are also going to need um a steering wheel. Okay, uh, let's just let's just keep it short. Steering. Okay, so we need a steering, and uh, finally, um, let's say we need a door. Okay, so um, you can. You can open the door, get in the car, and close the door. Okay, so you need these components of the car: engine, tire, steering, and the door. Okay, um, one thing you, uh, I want you to keep in mind is that just to uh show you why you would want to um make them into a composition of classes is, you you realize that the car engine. You, you cannot you, you're not mandated to only use the engine to create a car okay you can use you can take that same engine and do some other thing with it okay an engine I'm pretty sure a car engine like you just use fuel and it kind of turns its main function is to turn and provide um, maybe uh, should we say torque for for the for the wheels so that the wheels turn. So um, the main function of the engine is just to propel the uh, the um, the the tires or or the wheels. Okay, so um, you could use the engine to do some other thing. Maybe in another game or in another um, project, you could still use that engine. Same one with the tire. You could use the tire for some other thing. Maybe not necessarily a car. It could be a motorcycle or something. Um, the same thing with the steering wheel. You could use it for other things okay depending on the type of game uh, you want to make uh, same with the door okay you could use the door for other things so, okay so that's why uh, you would want to make the engine the tire the steering wheel the door you want to make them into their separate classes so what you need to do is you need to make a separate engine class a tire class a steering class a door class and then by the time you create your car class, you make all these one, two, three, four, all these four um, uh, objects, you combine them and you compose them into your car class. Okay, so we're going to head into um, Visual Studio and we're going to see how to do that. So um, I'll just open up uh, Visual Studio. Uh, for this, I'm just going to create uh, a new solution. Okay, um, it's going to be a console application. Okay, so I, I said uh, later on we're going to look at Windows Forms application. Yes, I haven't forgotten. Um, we will look at uh, Windows Forms application at some point, maybe two lessons after this. Um, uh, console. Okay, so I'm going to call it uh, car. Um, uh, what should we call it? Um, hmm. uh, I don't want to just call it car. Um, okay, let's call it car emulation or car simulation. Um, I'm going to place it on the desktop where we usually keep our projects. So, um, it's on desktop, my apps. Um, okay, so I'm going to create a new folder here. I'm going to call it car simulation. Okay, and I'll select that folder and I'll choose create, and that should create um, my solution. And Visual Studio opens. Uh, did I choose C sharp? Uh, yes, well, C sharp. Okay. Okay, so this is our car simulation um, uh, project, the solution and the project. Um, at the moment, we do not have any uh, extra class apart from the program class. So I'm just going to go ahead and create. So uh, if we remember our, our nodes, oh, okay, our closed notepad. Um, there are four things we need, uh, the engine, 
the tire, the um, uh, the steering, and the door. Yeah, let me just keep that um, separate somewhere so we don't forget. So we need an engine, a tire, um, a steering, and uh, a door. Okay. Um, I'm going to create a new. Okay. Um, sorry. I'll just pause this and I'll come back. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm back now. Um. So I'll add the. Uh, I'll first create. Um, the engine class. Uh, I'll call it engine. Click add. So there's my engine class. I'll just make it public. And uh, for the engine, um, I'll just make it have two um, public uh, uh, methods. So you can for starting the engine and stopping the engine. So public um, void it will be a void method because. Um, it doesn't really um, return anything, so uh, public void um, start and uh, inside. I'm just remember we're doing uh, it's a uh, Windows, uh, not a Windows application, it's a console application. So I'll just spit out some text to the console. Console dot right um, engine started. So this is what this is what will be spit out to the console. Engine started, and uh, there will also be a stop method, public void stop, which stops the engine. So it will just say console dot right now um, so i just want to finish implementing the engine class before i go on to creating the other classes uh, engine stopped engine stopped okay and um okay um okay um i can i can see a little uh, improvement we can we can have here okay so we, we can we can create a private field um we're going to call it private who is engine running so this will be used to check if the engine is already running um uh is engine running at the beginning it's going to be false okay so what we'll do is if we call start engine what it should do is it should check if is engine running so if the engine is running already then it should say console dot right line engine is already running okay so um this this notice what i'm doing this is a private uh, field okay and notice i'm not making it a property because i don't want um uh any other class apart from the engine class to know about the existence of of this is engine one okay that's that's the beauty about um classes they can actually hide um, things that are not um, useful to other uh, to external um, classes. Okay, so we just want this is engine running to keep to to keep to itself. If if the engine is already running and someone asks the engine to start the engine, okay, the engine knows that the engine is already running. Okay, but somebody from outside looking at the engine doesn't know if the engine is running or not. Okay, so he has uh, an external class has no access 
to this is engine one okay that's why i'm making it private okay and notice it's a boolean remember what a boolean is it's either true or it's false at any point in time it can only be true or false so if the engine is asked is asked to start it first check if it uh, the engine is running if it is running itself it can check if it is running by checking this uh, 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 this field okay this private field so if it is running it will just say engine is already running else otherwise so that means if it is not running that is when it will now say um, engine started and then after saying this it has to start the engine remember this else block gets called only if the engine is not running okay and the engine has been asked to start so you need to uh, ensure you uh, update this to reflect that the engine is now running so you have to say is engine running equals true okay and that's it you finished with the uh, start uh, method for the engine okay um we're going to do something very similar to the stop method instead of just saying uh, engine stopped we should first check if the engine is is not running okay so we check if this is how you you you, you check for not so this is not uh, an exclamation mark is engine running okay so this will return the the negation of is engine running so imagine if if assume uh, let's assume engine is running now it means this is going to be true but by the time this gets not it's going to be false okay so this will fail okay i hope that makes sense so just read this as if engine is not running okay so if engine is not running it should do of course it should say um console right line engine stop uh sorry if engine is not running uh it should first uh give a warning um, it should uh, say engine is um, so it should say console dot right now uh, engine is already stopped okay engine is already stopped okay and otherwise so this means the engine is running okay so if else let's say if the engine is running it should say um well first it should okay first it should stop the engine and say engine stopped and then it should update this is engine run by turning it to false so that uh, it marks that is engine running uh, equals false okay okay so i think i'm happy with this engine class so we have finished with the um engine class i'll just save all and i'll create the next uh so you can see we're, we're done with the engine class we, in fact i can just go ahead and close this here if i want it back i can just come back here and double click on it okay so i'll go to project the next class we're going to need is um we're going to need uh <sighs> see why i kept that note um so we're done with the engine we're going to need a tire okay so um the vehicle we're going to create has four tires but it doesn't matter all we need to do is we create only one tire class and we can use the tire class to create as many tires as we want so i go to tire and i choose add okay and i'm going to go public class tire and um uh, for the tire, um, I'm thinking of uh, some of the things we can do. Uh, we can we can just say um, um, uh, let let's say drive. Okay, so we can we can ask. <laughs> okay, that's not very um, that's not very smart. But um, I think for for our example purposes, let's just use drive. Okay, I know it doesn't make sense much, but um, we're just using it for example sake so we're going to say public void drive and when we ask the tire to drive it should move okay so it should go screeches um so we're going to say 
console dot write line screeches I don't know <laughs> okay screeches okay that's like a simulation of the tire going screeches <laughs> okay this is all I'm going to do in the in the tire class okay if we ask a tire to drive we we'll just go screeches okay um then next i'm going to i'm done with this tire okay I'm, I'm just trying to be as quick as i can um i'm trying to be fast so we can finish this lesson on time uh, i'm going to add a new class a door class okay we need a steering class and a door class so let's let's start with the steering class okay so we add a steering class i'm going to make it public public class steering and um you should be able to turn the steering left or right, okay? So we're going to have two methods, public void um, uh, turn left, okay? So turn left, console dot right line. Um, it should just say turn left okay and um, um, we're going to have a second method also a public void turn right it's just going to say um, console right line and right okay okay um so that's that's good um so that's our steering wheel class uh, i'll just save this and uh finally we're going to create the last i'm going to close that we're going to create the last class which is the uh door class so i'm just going to call this uh door also uh the car we're going to make is going to have four doors or maybe two doors okay we'll just make it with two doors but it doesn't matter how many doors we just need one door class that we can use to create as many doors as we want okay so public class door um the door i'm going to make it have just like the engine i'm going to keep a private um variable and um, uh, a private field, and I'm going to call it uh, door name, okay? So door name. So the idea is, um, okay, it's going to be a string. The idea is uh, each door, um, I'm going, we're going to name it. So for example, we can call it the left door or the right door or the front left door or the front right door, okay? And the rear left door, rear that's if we're having four. But I think we'll just make it two doors and um, we're going to have a left door and a right door, okay? Or a driver's door and a passenger's door, okay? Um, okay, so private string door name and then uh, it's going to have it's going to have a uh, okay actually the door name should um uh okay we should have a constructor for the door there's a reason because of the because of the private door name when we create the door we should tell it which uh, what kind of door it is i don't want to make it a field i just want to keep it private okay so um we're going to create a constructor public uh, this is how you create a constructor don't forget public door it should have the same name with the class okay um, and then in here it's going to the constructor is going to take a string and uh, it's going to be called let's just call it name and uh, in here we'll just say door name so we assign the door name as the name that we pass okay and that's it that's it for the constructor and then for the field, uh, for the public methods, I don't know if guys are following me on this. I'm probably moving too fast, but there's nothing new here, okay? This is just like I'm trying to give you an example of a way 
you can create or you can compose classes okay um nothing none of the code i'm writing is um is is, is new to you we've already covered all these things in the uh, previous lesson okay when we come to when we reach where we're going to do the composition i'll tell you this where we're doing the composition okay so this we're just creating normal classes that we've done before okay so um uh open door we should we should have a an open an open and a close okay so uh public uh is going to be a void open and aha uh -huh, by the way i'm going to keep another private field it's going to be a bool just like the engine uh we're going to call it is is open so it's going to keep uh track of whether the door is open or closed so at the beginning i'm going to keep it as false so at the beginning the car door is closed whichever door we create at the beginning is closed okay and um here public void open um uh, if, we, if we ask the door to open, it should first check if, if it's open. That's if the door is open, um, uh, you should uh, console dot right. Um, the door, uh, okay, um, the, we should call it the name, okay? Um, we're going to say, so if it's a front door, remember this is what uh, is going to keep the name of the door. So if it's a front door, it should go, the front door is already open, okay? So if it's a rear door, it should say the rear door is already open, okay? So this is where we're going to keep the name of the door, whether it's a front door or rear door. So here we're going to say the, and then we put the variable there. So we don't care whatever variable is there. It's if it's front door, it's going to say front door. If it's rear door, say rear door. If it's driver's door, it's say driver's door. Okay. So the door name um, is already open. Okay. And um, and then uh, else. So if the door is not yet open, that's if the door is closed. So we're going to use else else console dot right nine um uh uh else console dot right nine okay uh yeah we're going to do the same thing we're going to say uh the uh door name Don is okay. Um, we can just say has been opened. Um, um, the, the okay, let's just say just opened, okay. And um, don't forget after we open the door, we have to keep track that the door is uh, that the door is open. So we have to update this open and make it to be true, okay? And um, that's for open. For close, it's going to be similar. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it here. And I'm just going to change it to close. And uh, if we're going to negate this, if it is not open, then it should say, um, the door name is already closed okay otherwise that's if it is open then it should say the door just closed and it's open is to be updated to false not true okay okay and that is it for our uh, door class i think i'm happy with the door class now and uh, I can go ahead and close that. Um, what's left? I think we've done the steering, the tire, the engine, the door. Okay, I think that's that's it. So here is where we're going to see um, the composition of classes that we, we're, we said we're going to treat. Okay, we have our four different classes. 
which we're going to compose and create a car okay so first we're going to add a car class just like uh, a normal class so we're going to say car cs um, and choose add and i'm going to make it public car, class car okay now um it's going to have four different okay maybe not even four for the engine okay the, the car needs an engine so i'm going to keep i'm going to keep notice i'm keeping it as a private um variable okay it, it doesn't matter i could have made it a public field uh, I, I could have made it a public property but um for now i'll, I'll just make it a private um field okay i'm going to call it private and i'm going to call it notice the type i'm giving it the type is now engine okay this is where i'm supposed to put string or int or no i'm using engine because i want this variable or this field to be able to hold an actual engine object okay that's why i'm making the type to be engine okay private engine i'm going to say uh uh the engine or i can just write engine in, with with a small e okay which is the engine of the car okay so this is going to this variable this engine variable with a small e is going to hold um the engine object for the car okay notice that we haven't created the object yet okay it's just composed inside the car class okay it's going to keep an engine object okay um we're going to do something similar for for the uh for the steering there's also going to be only one steering wheel so uh i'm going to say steering private steering I'm going to say steering wheel. Okay. Notice I'm starting with a small s. Okay. Uh, there's a capital W here because at the uh, beginning of a new word. Okay. Um, then next, uh, we need uh, tires. We need four tires. Okay. We're going to have a front. Um, uh, let's say tire one. We don't need to be name them so i'm just going to say private now remember our arrays we can actually store the tires in an array okay you remember an array um that's one way another way is we could actually list out the tires as four different tire objects okay um i think it's better we store it as an array here just to show you uh, the different ways we can compose this uh so that for the doors, we're going to uh, list them out, front, uh, uh, a left door and a right door. Okay, so for the um, tires, I'm going to say private. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to make it an array. So I'm going to make it tire like this. And notice I'm using these brackets to signify that it is an array. So this type is going to be able to hold more than one tire object okay and i'm going to call it tires okay um so we can have a tire zero tire one tire two tire three okay depending on how many um uh we how many we initialize or we declare this tire to have okay um so that's it private tire tires um then finally the doors we're going to i'm, I'm, I'm still making them private okay um door so we're going to say door we're going to call this left door okay and uh private door we're going to call it right door okay now notice how we have composed all these things inside the car class now i'm going to create um a um a constructor for the car class which initializes all these objects okay remember these are variables that can store so this can store an engine object this can store a steering wheel this can store several tires this can store um a left door this can store a right door actually this can store a door this can store a door okay they 
they can st both of them can store um, a door. It's just that we name this variable left door and we name this right door. Okay. Okay. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that um, constructor. So public car. And in here, I need to initialize all these items. Okay. So for the engine, I'm just going to create a new engine. So notice the constructor, I'm making it to not take any parameters. Uh, if I want to create a car, I just say create me a car. I just call car without passing any, um, any, uh, um, without passing any parameters. Okay. And uh, the, the constructor is going to initialize them for me. This is how I, I am the one that, that, that's going to specify. Okay, the programmer will now specify how you want the constructor to initialize the car for you. Okay, so we're going to say engine because we're going to create a new engine. Notice what we're doing. So we create a new engine. Okay, um, that's for the engine. So here we have created an engine object and we've stored it inside engine. Okay, next we're going to um, create a, a steering. Uh, a steering wheel so uh, we're going to say steering um, sorry steering wheel we're going to initialize the steering wheel steering wheel equals new uh, steering okay so that initializes our steering and then uh, tire um, our uh, tires okay so for the tires we're going to first we're going to um, initialize the array so uh, tires is equal to um, new tire I know this is going to be um, is going to be odd to you we're just going to store uh, two tires in there okay I know this is probably um, okay I, th I think we could have probably done that here so we can say tire tires equals new tire to here so meaning oh sorry not two tires we're not <laughs> making a motorcycle it should be four okay so we're making a car so we should have four tires so um here what we can do you can see here we already specified that the array can hold four tires okay that's what we did here now here we're going to initialize the tire objects those four tire objects we're going to initialize them and store them inside the arrays okay so we're going to say um tire notice the bracket uh, no not that uh tires notice the the variable is tires with with an s so tires we're going to say zero remember arrays they start from zero so since there are four tires, it's going to start from 0, 1, 2, and 3, okay? There's no tire 4, okay? Here, we're just specifying that it has four um, items. This should be able to store four items. If you haven't already, please go back and look for where we treated arrays, and you'll see why we're doing it this way, okay? Why we're saying 4 here, and here we're saying we cannot have tire 4, okay? Just make sure you... Um, watch the video that treats arrays and it will uh, make everything clear to you okay so tire zero is equal to new so we're just going to create a new tire okay okay notice we're going to keep repeating this tire zero tire one equals new tire, tire two equals new tire what we could actually do is we can put this in in an array okay um uh, in a loop so we can say for int um, k equals 0, k is less than 3, uh, k is less than 4. So if k is 4, it's not going to, it's not going to run, okay? It's not going to uh, do the loop. It's going to do the loop for 0, 1, 2, and 3, okay? Um, uh, because this is less than 4, okay? Um, and then k plus plus, and then in here, we can just, Instead of saying tire 0 equals new tire, tire 1 equals new tire, tire 2 equals new tire, we can just say tire k. So k will be um, changing as the loop goes on. So at the beginning, k is 0, is going to create a new tire. Then k will be 1, it will create a new tire and store it inside tires 1, 
I, I hope that makes sense, okay? So this is faster than having to type it four times, okay? Um, I just realized that I, we still have one, two, three, four, okay? So may, maybe it's not so, uh, we still have four lines. Maybe it's not so efficient, but if we had wanted 11 tires that or 100 tires, that, that would have been really efficient, okay? I'm just showing you some tricks you can use to reduce um, your coding, um, the, number, uh, the number of lines of code you write, okay? All right, so we're done with the tires. Next, we're going to do the left door and the right door. So for the left door, we're going to say left door is equal to new. Remember the constructor for the door. It takes an argument, okay? So it has to take, you can see it's saying uh, it should provide a string, uh, a name, um, as which is a string. So we have to call it, um, give it, so we'll say left door, okay? Um, I can use the hyphen to separate that. Um, and then for the right door, we'll say new door right uh, door. Okay, and we have uh, perfectly initialized all our objects in the car constructor. Okay. Now, imagine if, um, okay, we would want, this is the car class, we would want to be able to start the car, uh, probably drive the car, and um, maybe off the, or stop the car, okay? So uh, let's create some methods, okay? Uh, let's say public void um, start, so this is going to be for starting the car, okay? public void start and what we're going to do you might you see this is the beauty of um, class composition because you already have the component that actually does the starting of the car okay if you want to start the car all you need is just to instruct the engine to start the car isn't it so just ask the engine to start itself and um, the car is started okay so here um, where we you, you want this the uh, method that starts the car all you need to do is just delegate okay you just delegate the uh, job of starting the car to the engine okay you just call the engine and tell it to start and that's it since remember in the engine it has uh, an engine dot uh, it has a start method so all we need to do here is just call engine dot start and that is it how convenient is this Imagine, I know this is not so um, obvious what we're trying to achieve. The reason is because um, we're not really making a real car simulation. If this was a real car simulation, we're programming inside our engine, um, uh, our engine class, there will be a lot going on, okay? There'll be a lot of things going on, maybe fuel going in, you, you know what I mean. There are so many things that we need to take care of, maybe combustion, now, you see, in the car class, because we made um, everything in the engine private, okay, it, we, we are like, we, we don't care about what's going on in the engine. All we care about is we just call the engine and tell it to start itself, okay? And the engine class is mandated, is given the responsibility of starting itself. So as a programmer, if you are, you are good at, um, say, creating steering wheels or you're good at creating tires you don't need to know how to create an engine okay you can call another programmer that's good as uh, at creating an engine let him create the engine for you and then let him provide you with the uh, interface or till i know this might be confusing to you interface can be used to also identify um public fields or public members of a, of a class okay so, for example, um, I don't know if this is going to confuse you, but um, just just take it. Interface does not limit it. Uh, the word interface does not is not limited to the interface I I, I taught you. Okay, um, the interface we looked at. It, it could also mean the um, it's it's an English word. Okay, it could also mean where you go to or what you interact with when you want to um, uh, communicate 
with an object okay so interface can also mean um, the public members of a class okay so like the start method of the engine class that is the interface of this our engine class in this case okay so um, uh, that's the beauty about class composition you can just uh, abstract you can see the engine is completely abstracted it's taking away the the problem of uh, starting the engine we do not care about the uh, intricacies the tiny tiny details that the small small things that need to be done for the engine to to start we don't care okay when we're in the car class we don't care uh, it's the programmer that writes the engine class he's the one that is going to take the headache of how to um, start the engine. Okay, I hope this is making sense. I'm just trying to show you um, the, the thing about object-oriented programming is that it's so, I don't know, it's just so beautiful. It's so, um, it's so efficient. It's kind of, it separates the job of every um, individual, okay? Um, if if a, an individual programmer is good in doing, say, uh, A, he doesn't need to know how to do B, okay? He can go ahead and perfect himself in how to do A. And then when um, uh, when you come to uh, write a particular thing or a particular application, each individual can concentrate on his own job without stepping on the toe of the other programmer, okay? So um, object-oriented programming gives you that. It kind of separates uh, the jobs of each individual in in, in 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 coding. Okay, I know I'm probably speaking Japanese because I'm not. I'm probably not making sense. But um, trust me, if if you go further in programming, you're going to you're going to understand what I'm uh, what I'm saying. Okay, um, okay. So um, back to our discussion. So here, like I said, for the start method. We just call the engine to start, and that's it. We don't care about the into cases, okay? Same thing with, uh, suppose we want to turn left, okay? Public void, suppose we want to turn the car left, turn left. Guess what? What we're going to do? We'll just call the steering. We'll just call the steering wheel and tell the steering wheel to turn left, and that's it. Steering wheel dot turn left, okay? And um, if we want to turn right, want to turn the car right, public void, turn right. We just call the steering wheel and ask it to turn the car right. Turn right. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Notice how well we've abstracted starting of the engine turning of the stair, steering to the left and turning of the steering to the right. We've completely abstracted them. So what's going on here is completely inside here, inside the steering class. What is going on here is completely inside the steering class. What is going on here, the starting of the engine, is completely going on inside the engine class. Okay, so that's, that's just the beauty of object-oriented program and this is what um, composition of classes is all about I think um, uh, this is getting too long let's just quickly try and finish this um, uh, example so we can just test run it and see what happens okay um, so we're going to go to left door uh, suppose we want to open the door so public uh, void uh, say open left door We can just say left door dot dot open. That's it. Uh, you want to open uh, open public void open right door. We can just um, go to right door dot open. So we just ask the right door to open itself okay um and then if we want to close the doors public void uh close left door 
we just say uh, left door dot close. Remember, the left door has a uh, the any door has a has an open and a closed method. Okay, same thing with uh, if we want to public void close right door, we just delegate it to the right door. We say right door dot close. This is how um, easy um, programming can be if your classes are well abstracted, okay? if they are well modulated, if you, if you build your, your program in very good and uh, in, uh, should I say, well abstracted or well modularized, um, it's going to be, writing your code is going to be this easy, okay? Um, so we're going to save all, uh, and then we're going to go to the program class and just test run this and see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the program class, we're going to create a car, and then we're going to test run the car. We're going to try and do some things with the car and see what happens. Okay, so here I'm just going to remove this console.write line. First, we're going to create a car. So I'm going to say car. Uh, my car is equal to new car. Okay. And that's it. Notice, notice here, by creating a car, our engine has been created. Our... Um, doors have been created, our steering uh, steering wheel has been created, our tires have has, has been created. Okay. Um, oh, we forgot to actually screech the tires. Uh, I think that should do with drive. Okay. Let's go with uh, public uh, void uh, drive. And there's a reason I'm doing this. Um, notice what we're going to do with the drive. What we'll do with the drive is we're going to say. Um, all the tires, all the four tires should be screeching, okay? So uh, we're going to say for each, uh, I don't know if I've done for each loop with you guys. Um, I'm assuming I did, but I can't remember if we actually looked at. Okay, maybe you, you uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and see if we haven't done it, then I'll probably do another separate um, class explaining the for each loop so for each tire t in uh tires tire uh, t dot um drive okay so we're going to ask all the four tires to drive okay so all the four tires are going to are going to be screeching so um here we've created a car and uh, we can start by starting the engine okay so um my car dot start okay let's play around with the engine so we start the car let's try to start the car again and see what happens remember if the engine uh, realizes that it's already started it will notify us that it's already started and if it's uh if it's not started it will tell us that um it is now started so my car does start. I, I asked the car to start twice, and then I I will ask it to stop. My car does stop. Um, is that did I did we do a stop? Okay, I think we didn't. So we should uh we have a start. We should have a stop. Public void stop. And what we need to do is we just call engine dot stop. Okay, I'll save that. Control S. Then I'll go to my program, my car dot stop, and then I'm going to ask my car to start again. My car dot start. Um, and then okay probably it's not the best way to start maybe we should start by opening the doors first so my car dot open left door and then uh my car i'm going to try notice that the right door is already closed so i'm going to try to close the right door close right door which should give us that warning 
and then my car dot close the correct door close left door okay so i'm just doing this so that we see um what happens if we call that and then um after starting the car we should say um my car dot uh, drive so we expect to see some screeches for to be precise and uh, my car dot turn left and my car dot turn right and finally I'll tell the car to stop my car dot stop okay so here's a list of what we're asking the car to do first we open the left door so we should see the left door is opening and uh, we ask the right door to close we should encounter a warning here telling us that the door is already closed then we say it should close the left door we should close it and then we start the car which we should see and here we should encounter a warning telling us um, the car is already started we stop the car we start the car again that should be successful and uh, we should drive here we should see four screeches from the four different tires and uh, turn left turn right we should see the car um, well we should see it telling us that it has turned left and it has turned right and finally it should stop so let's run this and see what happens okay so you can see the first one uh, left door just opened which is right the right door is already closed so that's um, that's it the left door just closed which is correct you can see the left door was open so the left door just closed you can see engine started and then here we try to start the engine again it says engine is already running and we stop the engine engine stopped we start the engine engine started and these are the four screeches from the tires the four different tires each screech is from a different tire screeches 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 and we turn left we turn right and the engine stopped um this is what glass composition is all about i hope this makes at least some sense to you and i'll see you in the next class